Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at uh, Oracle Park in San Francisco on the historic McCovey Cove. We're excited to be here. They're moving a lot of dirt, I think, downstairs. But we're at a very cool event. It's called Sports Tech Tokyo World Demo Day. And we're excited to have our next guest. He's Todd Sims, SVP of Corporate Development from Axis. Todd, great to see you. Great to be here, thank you. Absolutely, so for people that aren't familiar with Axis, give us kind of the company overview. Sure, we're a global ticketing company. We were launched out of a global sports and entertainment company called AEG in 2011, and we serve live, the live entertainment market and ticketing. Excellent, all over the world. Yep. All different types of uh, events. AEG is a global company. We, they run venues uh, worldwide and we serve them as well as third party clients. Okay, great. So we're here at Sports Tech Tokyo. It's a little bit different type of an organization, kind of an incubator, not really an incubator, yep. kind of an association, not really an association, but certainly a community. Why are you guys here? What does this organization mean to you? Why is it important? Yeah, it's really important. We, we launched our ticketing service in uh, Tokyo, uh, uh, last year and you know that's a market that we love it's a vibrant large market with super passionate fans both on the sports side and on the music side what it really needs is more of an ecosystem it can't just be a new innovative ticketing platform it needs all the bells and whistles around it to really innovate the fan experience and that's what these startups are doing I just I just love this job because you know you think of many industries if you're not familiar with yeah. them it's, they seem really simple on the outside yeah. and like everything once you get under the covers there's a lot more yeah. going on so from the outside look it in a ticket is a ticket yeah what's the innovation in tickets what's different about somebody in Japan buying a ticket to watch a baseball game than somebody yeah. buying a ticket to come well, here tonight I'll talk a little bit about what we're bringing to Tokyo and what we've brought to our uh, uh, platform of clients here uh, in the States as well as in Europe. And that's really a digital ID based ticketing system. So when you walk into the Staples Center at LA Live in Los Angeles, that thing that's getting scanned is not a ticket, it's an identity, it's you. And what's being reviewed is whether you have access to that building on that night or not. So uh, what that allows for is full data around the customer base. Every president of every team wants to know two things. They want to know who's in their building and they want to have some control, whether it's economic control or otherwise, on the secondary market. Our digital ID ticketing system enables both of that. And that's kind of the innovation that we're bringing to the Tokyo market. But I would imagine when you say, you know, it's me, you know, the opportunities are way beyond yes. that because now, you know, what are my preferences? How often do I come? What kind of beer do I like to drink? I mean, that just opens up a whole kind of CRM uh, world of opportunity for this relationship between the team now and that person with that barcode. A absolutely, and that happens today, but what you're missing is every time someone comes in with a paper ticket, you're really not sure who's entering the building. So that eliminates that piece of that, and it, it gets all these teams with analytic departments to really have a full picture of their fan base. So, you know, they may have been investing in some of this and capturing 60, 70 percent of their who's in the building, now they have 100%. Right, and I would imagine they've been doing this for a long time with kind of their, their season ticket base and yep, not sure. necessarily knowing they're in the building, but they yep. got a lot of data on their season ticket holders. Yep. How has that you know, changed and what can they apply there to the casual fan that, that maybe bought a ticket on the secondary market and is you know, coming and sitting in the bleachers? Well, it's huge for uh, up sales and, and establishing that relationship. A lot of teams, if you've you know, just buying a single ticket off a secondary market, you're nowhere in that database. Now, because of our ID-based system, uh, those people are now prospects for either a mini pack or a season ticket package. Right, I'm just curious how the rise of the secondary market really impacted the teams and how they think about their own ticket base. I think the first one was probably StubHub back in the yeah, day. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it all happened kind of outside the purvey of the leagues and kind of outside yeah. the purvey of the teams. Luckily, they were pretty smart and figured out we need to be a piece of this. So how did that kind of evolution change the way the teams think about their fans? Well, look, I mean, teams like music promoters. They Sometimes they like the brokers getting involved because it takes risk off the table. I think teams are realizing, though, that a real uh, yield management uh, perspective on their ticket inventory to really uh, revenue manage this appropriately, they have to take a holistic approach on their tickets. And any time you have a segment of your ticket base where you really don't have control of pricing, distribution, all of that, it really hurts and it has an impact on your unsold primaries. Right. So what teams are looking to do is gain more control 
and manage this inventory more holistically. To do that, you really need to know all the data. And again, the ID-based ticketing system enables secondary sales, but at least you are tracking those sales and you know from one person to the next who, who sold it and who bought it. Right. I'm curious to get your perspective on, on the difference between if you are more entertainment focused. So, you know, the Rolling Stones were in town a couple yep. of nights ago and it's really a one shot deal for the Rolling Stones in the Bay Area that night yeah. versus the Giants game, right? Where you're hoping that, you're, that people come back over and over. Do they think of it differently or is it more, you know, Jeff, you like music, you went to the Rolling Stones last night, maybe you'll come and see somebody else tonight sure. is that is that well kind of where they no they, doubt sports teams are a lot smarter about their fan base they they have loyalty built in they have got history uh you know there's variability there's night of game and then there's weather and who's on the mound and all of those factors but promoters are a lot more in the dark about you know is this an artist that you know how much credence can they put in the last tour they did it's two been two years is that artist still going to sell appropriately or, or similarly than they did last time. Again, the secondary market on the music side is maybe a bigger issue because of that variability and those promoters are willing to take risk off the table. But the same thing applies. In, in order for them to really manage and, and revenue manage that tour, they really need to know who's buying and grab some of that secondary economics out of the system. Right. And that's, again, what our platform enables. And that's what we're really bringing to the Tokyo market. It's really exciting. That's a great market for us. Well, I was going to say, just to close, you know, what's special about the Tokyo market, either from an opportunity side or kind of a unique way in which they do things or yeah. a unique way in which the kind of the fan experience is as you look at that market? Well, it's interesting. I mean, in a, in a, in a culture that is so reliant on such interesting technology, the ticketing technology is actually uh, quite old. And so we're excited to bring that. We've got great partners. Pass Revo is our partner there, and they're really selling that through the Yahoo ticketing uh, channel. Uh, they, we, have, we just signed the B League, which is the professional basketball league. We'll be rolling them out in their fall season uh, coming up soon here. Um, but basically, they are looking for the same things we're looking for. More data and more capturing of the secondary market, and we, we can bring that to them. All right. Well, Todd, thanks for, yeah. for taking a few minutes. Uh, of course. To pull the covers back on yeah. ticketing. <laughs> a lot more going on than people uh, think. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. He's Todd. I'm Jeff. You're watching The Cube. We're at Oracle Park on the shores of McCovey Cove in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.